Imagine that you did some complicated statistics and analysis and later on you want to share your results with some colleagues or use um, them in other programs. So there must be a way to get data out of R and also to get data into R because you don't always like to type all the individual numbers or strings into the editor. And of course there is a way and in this video I would like to show you how this can be done. So to do that, I already cre created a um, data set which we would like to save and load later on. And it's the uh, usual um, data set of imaginary course participants. So they have a certain height, a certain age, and a certain sex. And we combine them to a matrix, uh, to a data frame that's course data and put row names on them and when I look into this data set I can see here that's a data frame like we have learned last time. So whenever you want to load or save stuff it should go into on, the, on your file system and show it will go into a specific directory and that's the working directory that we talked about in the beginning. So whenever you want to save or load that is the uh, latest point at which you would like to check what your current working directory is. You can do that by um, using the get wd command. And since we are not in the folder of the second session, I will change that with the set wd command, where I specify that it should go into the folder of the second session. And when I check again, where I am, you can see now we're in the right folder. And as you also see here in the file view, I already prepared some things in that direction, uh, already loaded and saved data, but we will create another file here, which we will like to use then. So the easiest or most direct way to save stuff from R is a command that without surprise is called save and when I specify what I would like to save here so my course data and also where it should go as a file course data 2 dot our data then you can see here a new file has been created, course data dot r data and uh, I don't want to check that out now. Um, I want to open my file browser and go directly to this place there. This only takes a bit of a while because I haven't prepared that yet. So here we are, session two. Voila. So here's the file and when I look into that with let's say um, an editor the result is not very convincing. So you can see here unreadable signs and so on. That's because it is saved as a binary file. And with that we can't work very well outside of R. But we can work with that inside of R so let me just remove our original course data. You can see now it's gone here from the environment and also if I use the ls command you will see that has gone from our list of available variables. But I can load this data set in again by just saying load and specifying the file that I would like to load. And you can see the course data are already back here. The thing is different than you probably are used to do right now. There is no uh, assignment going on here. So I just save this data set, then I load the file and 
do not assign that to a specific variable, still the original variable that has saved is back into an, in the environment. So it's a bit different here from the usual philosophy in R, but uh, you can work with it quite well. If you, more, for example, want to save just the data and later assign them to another variable with loading them, you can use another format and that's the right oops save sorry save rds command and when you look up into the help file we can see that is a seri serialized data set which we write with that so we do the same like here above save that into CourseData2.rds and I should have closed the equation marks here. That's now you what you see what's happened uh, when you don't close the equation marks here. R realizes okay this command can't be over here and I got a plus sign and although that's just a typo here I have to finish this command in a way and now I will have a file with a quite strange name. We will look that up in a second, but let me just save it in the correct way. So here's the file with the strange name that we just created with a closing bracket. We will remove that. And now we have here the RDS file. And if I look into that with an editor, Again, we can see that's a binary file, so it's not really readable and hardly to um, load into other programs. But now I can do uh, something like load, uh, sorry, read RDS and load the file again. And now different from the simple load command, when I just have it like that, I see an output in the console, which means I can store that into a variable of my choice. So I can make a new variable and read this file into them. And you can see here, it's the same, it has the same values like the original one, but I was able to store the saved data in another variable. So with these two commands, you can save and load data within R in R's specific original file format. There are other file formats that you can use for saving data here. I will not go into detail with this with this presentation, with this video tutorial. You can look that up into in the presentation for the course if you like. I only want to go. Um, highlight one specific file format and that's the CSV format which stands for comma separated values and that's probably the, the most handy file format to exchange data between R and the outside world, between R and different other programs, for example spreadsheet programs. And to it's a very simple format um, where the individual values as the name says are separated by commas. So I can write CSV with again which data set I would like to save. So the first data and the file should equal to data2.csv. And when I trigger that, so something had happened in the back and you can see here we have our course data 2csv and again would like to open that with uh, editor so that's how it looks like you can see we have our values at least the strings isolated in equation marks then the individual values separated by a comma up here we have the variable names or the, the column names and 
I can also open these data up in a spreadsheet software. And here my spreadsheet software is asking me how are these CSV file, how is the CSV file formatted? You can see that there is a comma version. That's what we just used here. And when I select that, I get a correct output of the individual columns. But also you can see that there is a semicolon version and other ones. But these two are the most important ones, comma and semicolon. Um, CSV was first used, I think, in the Anglo-American uh, world. And later on, um, there were some people realized, okay, in Europe, sometimes they use a specific decimal separator, which is the comma, different from the American system where you have the dot dividing between uh, the whole numbers and the decimal cells um, behind them. And in this case, uh, comma would not work as a separator for the cells. So there is the second flavor, and that's where the cells are separated by a semicolon. We will soon save a CSV2 format which with semicolons. But let us first check out how this comma separate file look in a spreadsheet software. And here we go. So like we would expect this to be. And I can add another person here. Let's call him Martin. Let's suppose he's 41 and one meter and he's a male, one meter 81. And let's suppose he doesn't like to give his name. So I put an MA here. And now I save that back. File save. Um, LibreOffice asked me if I really want to use CSV. Yes, I would like to use that format. And now the file is saved. And then come back, go back to R and read CSV. And I use the file that I just edited here. And you can see here now our data set is read back and the entrance I just did in the spreadsheet is also available here. You also realize that there is now a strange column with the name X and that was our original row names. So if we want to use this first column as row names, we can specify that in the read CSV um, command by saying row names should equal to one. So one means our first column here uh, has the row names. And if I do that, now you can see that the names are again the row names as they should be. So with this, we can read in files um, and exchange them with spreadsheet software. And if I do the same here for the CSV2 format and here we have the next file. I'll first look into that with an editor. Now you can see the difference here. So we have now the semicolon, but probably it's more clear if I just add to our course data another column, which I call height in meters, and that should contain the height divided by 100, and then save that again. And now you can see here, now I have another column here, height in meter, and here now our decimal values, the decimal places are separated by a comma, while the cells are separated by a semicolon. And we can compare that to our traditional CSV file. And there you can, uh, if I reload that actually, so come on, not read, but write. Okay, here we go. So 
This is the CSV file where the comma is the separator of the cells and the point is the separator of the decimal places. This is the um, continental version again. So you can see the differences here. Okay, so whenever you're using a computer where your language um, is generally set to a continental language, German, French, whatever, it might be more convenient to use the CSV2 command because Excel usually don't ask you, uh, different from LibreOffice, what you would like to use as a um, cell separator, as a column separator in CSV files, but just assumes that whatever it gets is in the language setting that you had in the first place. So when you use a continental language setting, you might use CSV2 to not get problems with Excel, or you install LibreOffice as alternative to Excel and the Microsoft Office Suite. And if you are in the Anglo-American um, language settings, it might be fine enough to use the standard CSV file. Okay, so now we have seen how to save data uh, from R to with CSV and what the differences are between the different flavors of that. We have read the data into a spreadsheet and changed them, saved them back, load them back into R. So that's the way how to communicate with the outside world. Also other programs can read this CSV format quite easily because it's, it's a really basic standard format but it's capable to get to um, save the kind of data that we like to use most of the time in R. You probably could ask why not saving uh, or reading directly in Excel format and there are ways in R to do that. There are actually several packages that, that are able to do that and since Microsoft's file standard is now and also the LibreOffice file standard are now available as um, open documented formats standardized um, that actually also works quite well but it requires to have another package installed and most of the time it's actually not necessary so CSV is actually the um, most handy way of communicating with the outside world. Um, another thing that we can save or load is for example if uh, I save and load the workspace. When I quit my R session, I was always I'm always asked save workspace into the working directory of my project. And if I do that, if I say save and start R Studio again, you can see that the environment I had before is recreated. Um, so you also can see that here is, uh, if I go to folder here, um, oh, now I'm a bit surprised, I hate surprises, okay, let me just show you this, uh, maybe in this way, so there's a hidden file here that's called .r data and this is the workspace file which contains our workspace environment here and when I say file quit if I have changed something and um, say save this into that file um, we can also look into it and we will see that's again a binary file so it's not human readable, but this is a way of storing data in between sessions working with R. So if you just want to close R and R Studio for a short time and later on work with the same data again without having to recreate them or running the whole script, it is a good idea, good idea to save your workspace as it is. And with the next session in R and R Studio, you can work with the same data on the spot. But it's not a um, sustainable way of keeping data. So if you want, if you have produced some results from your analysis, 
it's always a good idea to store them in a more general file format. For example, CSV would be a good alternative for that. So now I think we have seen or we have all the necessary tools and places. Uh, we can work with variables. We know what kind of data structures we can use in R. Uh, we can read and load data in. And I think this is the time where we can start doing some nice and interesting stuff with R. And that's what we will do next in the next video, where I think we will start having an idea how to create plots from data that we have um, that we load into R and then make some nice graphics from that. So see you soon.